Hey guys, so uh, for Volcano's release, I wanted to do something brand new, a couple of brand new things and something very special. Um, so I decided to actually do some art projects. Um, I'm not an artsy person, but my sister is, and so sometimes very simple art projects really do appeal to me. So I um, decided to try to make a volcano. Um, so my first thought was, okay, let's make one out of clay. We can paint it. It'll look awesome. Um, and then I was walking through the art aisle at Walmart and I saw these like foam cones. And so I thought, oh, we could make one using this and we can use foam fabric and we can make volcanoes out of that stuff. So my sister and I basically decided to make two different volcanoes. The clay one um, we had to do on day one. We had to make the volcano and then we had to let it dry overnight before we could paint it um, but we were able to make the foam ones on day one of the project so this is the video and it's time-lapsed with you know my voiceover to kind of tell you what I did so I really hope that you enjoyed this fun little project for Volcano in honor of its release so thanks for watching okay so my sister the first thing that we started off with was the clay um, and at first I thought, as you can see, our hands gesturing and stuff, that's us talking about what we were going to do. Um, and I thought we were going to do a big volcano with all of the clay that I bought, but she is, so we started forming it and my sister, eventually we decided to pull it apart and make a smaller one because it's too big. So then we basically just started working the clay, which is what you see here, shaping it, you know, getting it to look more volcano-like. So that took a lot, long time. We started to kind of get it. I didn't know what I was doing, so my sister kind of like inputted every once in a while um, and helped me adjust the shape on my side to help me get it right. As you can see, she's like picking it up and kind of showing me where to do things and stuff like that. So I was kind of smoothing things out. Sometimes she had to go deal with the dogs, which is understandable. Um, and so basically that's all that we do here is just working on shaping it and that's kind of the entire process so eventually when we got it to shape we took off the top of it because that makes it more volcano like and we decided to kind of put a hole in the middle because that's where the volcano kind of caves inward which is where the magma comes out of it so that's what you can see here is that we're forming the hole and kind of making the edge of the volcano which is where liam and his friends would have been standing kind of looking into the volcano and we used the little art tool that she has to kind of make the edges jagged and she mentioned like making it like more natural looking so when we got that we kept pinching it and making it up to par um, with the way that we liked it and then we started smoothing out the outside because there was all these like handprints and fingerprints from us so basically this took quite a while um, for us to do this part because we wanted to smooth everything over and while we did this we were just kind of chit-chatting back and forth and we just kind of worked around the volcano to make it look more natural no fingerprints and you know just kind of making it look as natural as possible is what we did here so this is about the part we realized that we were done and there was nothing else we could do today so we were gonna on day one um so we decided to put this away to dry and in the meantime work on our foam projects our foam um volcanoes so there for a minute we kind of just talked about what we were gonna do and everything else and it was decided that we would try to wrap these foam volcanoes in fabric and make it look like a volcano um this was more like a kitty project compared to the clay one which was more serious but we had fun with it i had to adjust the camera um and everything so i went to go get a knife so we could cut off the top we didn't know how much to cut off and once we cut it off we had trouble cutting it off but once we did we didn't want to go too low so we kept testing it to see how what the right shape was and where we should cut it to make it look more volcano like because the cone itself was too high so eventually we got a good um, height and then my sister did hers since there's two of them so once we had those course we put the two tops together I thought that was kind of funny and then we basically tried to figure out how we wanted to wrap the fabric around them without making it look like excess stuff and we got to messing around and playing around a little bit um, as well here in a few minutes so I just kept playing around with it trying to figure out where my fabric like where to put it so that it didn't look weird or overlapped which was the big struggle and the thing that I had to figure out so 
Um, that was kind of the next challenge that we were trying to work on and we got tape and decided to try to tape it um, to the the foam thing and we, of course we had a lot of issues with the tape because it didn't want to stay up there so you'll get to see that a little bit. So the big challenge here was again getting the fabric um, to where it was positioned well to where it would look more natural like land without looking like it's overlapped. Um, and so I was asking my sister what she thought and everything on mine and she was kind of taking it and showing me what she thought I should do which was to wrap it as you see on the screen and then to cut it off at that point to cut off the excess there. So that's what I decided to do. So I taped it down and then decided to cut off the excess on that side of the volcano. And um, I did have some concerns about cutting it off and she kind of gave me a tip on folding it over. So it was kind of hard because it kept rolling around and everything, but eventually I got it. So. And then I decided to cut off the excess on the bottom. I was trying to keep it in the camera as much as possible. And then about the top, that's when we were discussing what to do on the top, folding it over, whatever. And I realized mine wouldn't fold over all the way completely. There'd still be a little bit of a hole. And we joked about how they looked like Jawas from Star Wars a little bit, but um, that was kind of funny. So eventually we decided to cut off the top so that we could put what looks like lava spouting out of it. Um, we had these little fabric sticks, I don't know what they're, they're called, um, but basically because it's foam we could basically poke them inside the middle of the volcano and I chose red, yellow, and orange and we decided to intertwine them together um, and so originally I was just going to twine them all the way, um, which is what I did here by twining them and twisting them together um, and then after that they were really really easy to like stick into the top of the volcano so then I decided to cut it um, my sister decided it'd be easier to cut it so that it wasn't so tall and I agree with her so then I realized it would be easier to unwind it to make it look like the lava is actually spouting out of the top of the volcano so to speak so Basically, the next part of this was just a series of getting the twines put in there, winding them together, sticking them in the center of the volcano, and unraveling them to look like they were coming out. Um, and so it was a little bit of work. We wanted to make them of different heights and everything, so I did my best there and just kind of figured out what height I wanted to do and what would be best on that side of things. So. You can also see our cat in the background of the video. And, you know, I wasn't sure how long to make them or whatever. So then I eventually I started working on the main lava flow down the side of the mountain. So for that, I stuck it in the top and then, as you can see, intertwined them downward. You can see my dog as well. Um, and then basically decided to cover up the where the fabric overlined each other with the lava. Um, and then I put the excess on the top to cover up the rest of the volcano um, and to make it look like the inside of it was filled with magma because that's what happens in actual volcanoes. So then I was trying to figure out how to tape it there without looking like the tape on the outside and I was trying to cut it to size to try to be smaller um, to hide the tape part and I realized it was going to look really crappy so I eventually moved on and decided to tape the top of it down until I could figure out how to get the um, the lava basically to get put on the outside. Um, so I began thinking about how you can stick them in the top. So I thought if I get a larger one, then I can wrap it around the end of my lava flow, so to speak, as you can see on the screen and basically stick it in the bottom. So that's what I decided to do, um, was I wrapped it around several times and then I stuck it in the bottom and then hit it so that it wasn't obvious that it was, you know, stuck there. And I put a piece of tape on there just for good measure. As you can see, we have a lot of issues with our tape. 
So for now, that's what I decided to do. Um, my sister and I started talking about what her plan was going to be and what she was going to do. Um, but in the meantime, I decided to put more, you know, um, sticks coming out of the top because hers looked really good. And I was like, oh my gosh, mine sucks. So I decided to put more in the top to kind of finish filling it in. Um, which is what I was doing there, just basically intertwining the big, you know, a whole one together and then cutting it to size based on how tall I wanted the lava spouts to look, basically. Um, I, and then I also um, wanted to make an additional lava flow to make it look thicker. That's what my sister was also talking about, um, making it look like an actual lava flow. Um, and so once I added an additional one there, um, I started working more on the top again, as I said before, just trying to make it look... Um, you know, more like an actual volcano. I do believe this is when I started to compare mine to hers. So then we decided to hot glue the lava flow to the thing because it would be so easier that way and it would look so much better. So my sister kind of helped me um, get it all hot glued down and I held it there for a while to try to get it to dry. Um, and that actually worked so much better than the tape and sticking it up underneath because it actually like stuck to the thing and it looked more like lava and it looked more natural that way. So once it was dried and stuck on there, I undid the bottom because that was kind of like lifting my volcano up and I wanted it to sit flatly so and after this I was just putting on the finishing touches you know adding in different other lava spouts and stuff like that to make it more um, I don't know vivid I guess and more like my sister's because hers was really good and again I'm not an artsy person and she is so as we were doing the finishing touches, it was decided that we would make the lava look a little thicker by adding another round. So I, again, twisted the yellow, the orange, and the red together um, in a straight line, hooked it at the top, and then made it flow back down. Um, and we got the hot glue gun again and decided to hook it around to make it look more um, thicker, like an actual lava flow coming from different directions and stuff like that. So I made it go back up just to make the top thicker. And then I brought my extra piece around and kind of to look like it was a separate lava flow that it split off and then joined back with the big one. So I made a little gap right there. And after that, I had to hold it to dry and cut off the excess. Because at that point they were pretty much done. So this is the final touch on mine. This is the final result of what mine looked like. This is my sister's and this is both of ours together. We decided to take them outside for pictures. Okay, so on day two, uh, the volcano wasn't actually quite dry, and we actually realized that it was late, and the next day it was going to be the release, so I needed to get it made. So we should have waited for it to dry, but we wanted to get it done because I needed time to edit the video. So essentially, we rushed to get this done. Um, not the painting part of it, but we were trying to get it done tonight. So we normally would have waited for the clay to dry a lot more because um, we were worried because if the clay isn't dry enough, it can make the paint look weird or be weird I guess I'm not an artsy person so I don't know specifically um, and then what we would have done is after doing this first coat of mixtures of different blacks and well different uh, browns and black we would have waited for that coat to dry before applying the lava um, we also decided to use my sister decided to use sponges because it would get it done faster and individual brushes would have been a lot harder and the the sponges as well allowed for the right texture um, to the side of the mountain to make it look more natural so we kind of went back and forth and decided to kind of mixture a bunch of different colors like I said different shades of brown and black and kind of overlay it all to get one shade um, because of the bad lighting in the room you can't quite see the legit colors of it but it was kind of a dark brown color and it worked really well blending all the colors together. So once we got the initial part of it painted, I went over to the different areas where it was like um, white and where I had, you know, missed some spots and everything. So a lot of what we did here was basically that. Um, and then we decided to try to dab the inside. So my sister did a little bit at first and then um, she couldn't see how well her side of it was. So I... Um, eventually went up there as you can see to kind of help dab the parts that she missed while I went back over um, 
the other parts on my side that seemed a little bit of white. So we would pause sometimes to kind of look at the color and kind of talk about the shade and whether it made sense and whether it was all good. Um, again, on the camera here, it looks really, really black, but it's actually a really dark brown. Um, so then we decided to go ahead and do the lava, and this is where we were talking and unsure about the colors and drying it and whether they would look good or not because the colors would start to blend together. Um, and if we started to do the lava flow, we had to also pick out the spot of where we wanted the lava flow to come down at, and if we started to do that, it would look more gray and the colors would start mixing together. So my sister decided we would do white first to kind of, one, outline where we wanted the lava flow to be, and two, create a base to kind of separate the dark browns and blacks from the reds and yellows and oranges because if we did that the yellows and orange the lava basically would not look lava it would look like something else so the white created kind of a base to kind of separate it all because we couldn't wait for it to dry um we did decide to wait a little bit for the white to dry and I was jokingly trying to blow on it and stuff like that. We also decided to do the inside um, because, you know, the magma chamber and stuff. And I was talking to her about that as well. Um, so if we had had more time and had been able to wait for it to dry, it would have looked really good because we could have waited for the brown and black to dry. We could have waited for the white to dry. And each of these things would have been done in stages. And as a result, it would have come out a little better. Um, but basically, we made the decision we did. And we decided to go with, you know, to start immediately as soon as the white dried a little bit more. We decided to do the yellows and reds and oranges. So then we decided to start doing those and make the lava. Um, I started to realize that my red was actually more of a pink and um, it created a bit of problems because then the lava basically it turned the lava pink and the more we added other colors the more they started to blend and mesh and look like a gigantic mess. And so we decided that we needed to let this dry a little bit or it was going to turn out bad. Um, so for this, we actually paused the video and took it over to my fan and let the fan continue drying it because if we'd used like a blow dryer, um, because the clay wasn't all the way dry yet, we were, because the clay wasn't all, all the way dry yet, we were worried it would melt the clay and cause even bigger issues. So we took it to the fan and let the fan dry it. And when it was dry, we continued um, with more colors and this time I stuck with more of the yellow and she did more of the orange so that the pink didn't come back through again um, so she did apply a little bit of red um, but we didn't have that trouble with the pink anymore so I used a lot of yellow because I really really wanted to bring out the lava color of it and then we kind of blended it with like orange and stuff like that to make it look more lava like um, and I did the inside of course to make it look like the magma chamber and everything um, of course, my sister would come back by and kind of blend everything that I did because she knows more what she's doing than I do, but we had a lot of fun and the sponges, like I said, it worked really well because the texture ended up really, really good. So this is the final version of how it turned out. Um, I think it looked really good and I think it turned out really well, um, especially in this lighting. You can really see the lava flow. You can see part of the magma chamber and I think it looks like a volcano. So. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed this little project video and that you've had fun. Be sure to order Volcano if you haven't already. You can order it off Amazon or directly from me and the link is in the description below. Thanks for watching.